I'm just kidding. I don't know where I am. Oh, yeah, the yeah, whole time yeah, like, yeah. I have no idea where I am. That's fair. I'm like, the first time I was like, is this heartbreak? Yeah, right, and I right. I have no idea if it was or not. <laughs> so, I'm like, oh, this They're must, all heartbreak. This you must know. be heartbreak. Yeah. <laughs> This episode of Talking While Running is brought to you by Gooder. Gooder is the best sunglasses brand for runners, cyclists, whatever you do outside, whatever. You want to wear Gooder and also ultra lightweight, polarized. Check them out. All the description below. Enough said. Okay, welcome back to another episode of Talking While Running. Very special, uh, guys. So this is like comedians in cars with... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nice. Just a little more low key. Yeah, is it? But, not uh, as funny, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> oh, I'm not Jerry Seinfeld, okay? Yeah. But uh, Mel Rojas, thank you so much for coming on the show. How are you doing? Perfect day in Boulder. What's going on? Beautiful day in Boulder. Wow. Winter um, finally broke a little bit. Money. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, okay, sick. So you just mentioned it. Seven days out from Boston. You were the top American at Boston. Let's just get into it. Yeah. Two years in a row. Yeah. Yeah. I also want to start off before I forget. You, I think you run six marathons. I think so. You haven't finished out of the top 10 Ugh. in a single marathon, which is like. <laughs> Don't say it. That, okay. Sorry, but that's insanely impressive. But you got Boston coming up on the docket. How's the training going? And kind of just where you're at. Give us a quick pre-race scoop. All right. Um, training was a little confusing. Yeah. I started, I think about 10 weeks out with a shit ton of parasites. Oh, I heard about this. So you went to Kenya. <laughs> yeah, I went to Kenya. Dude. Was in bed for almost all of it. Um, but yeah, actually Whoa. focused really hard on clearing the parasites. Um, got like, I got a solid... It was like a short training block. Yeah. But it was okay. It was solid. So I think I think I I think I'm gonna feel good. Okay. <laughs> wow, okay, so wait, what is I mean, what is getting parasites in Kenya? Like just a quick oh, man. not to bring up the worst memories, but Yeah. Like I ate some street food. I don't know why I did that. It was like after a really hard long run. Wow. And I was just like, oh, on my way home, I was like shivering already because I was just like, yeah, felt like I had depleted. just so depleted. Yeah. Um, there was like no water on the run, and it was like this like two hour and twenty minute like oh my God. hardest run of my life, and they were like no How water. High up? Oh, it was like, well, we plummeted down into a valley. Got it. And then we just climbed. Okay. We're eight miles out. All right. At about what we were like. That's like Boston then. Kind eight thousand feet or something. Okay. Yeah. Um, but so on the way home, ate some street food like an idiot. Uh, by the time I got to the our guest house, I was like, and already I'm feeling it. out forever. Yeah. Oh my so god. I, Plus, you were depleted from the run. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that's actually really like dangerous, right? Immediately. Yeah, I was pretty messed up. Um, that sucks. And then I basically just was in bed for a couple, three weeks. Yeah. I think it was like three weeks of like laid out flat. Yeah. And then. How? I mean, how was Kenya in a bed the whole time? <laughs> and it took uh, you at least or something. The bed, the bed was not. I mean, I was just like. Pouring sweat into the bed. The oh whole time. my god! Like disgusting, gross sweat. Yeah, good, just, I mean, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and just like didn't get it. I couldn't get anything down, and they kept telling me they were like, "Oh, you got the two dayer." Yeah. I'm like, okay, I got the two dayer. I'll be fine. <laughs> and then I was like, oh. like, "Oh, you got the three. And I'm like, okay. That's and what they like said. The fiber. And after five days, I was like. I need to go to the hospital. Like, Dang. I haven't gotten anything down. So I went to the hospital. Thought I was better after taking the antibiotics because my travel home wasn't bad. Okay. And then I got home and I was like, I'm better. Yeah. And 
and then I was not. And I think what happened was the antibiotics like killed the parasites. But then I think the eggs hatched that thing. Holy shit. And then, so I had like a brief moment of like, Reprieve. Reprieve. Yeah. <laughs> and then. Oh my God, you're in the eye of the storm. Yeah. Dude. So. Well, I'm glad you're okay now. Regardless yeah. of racing, that's unreal. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're doing all right. We'll see your uptrend. I'm sure continue. Yeah. As you bounce back, but yeah. like we touched on the marathon experience at this point. Um. Which one? I don't know. Looking back, like any big lessons from them overall that you can aggregate? Yeah. Um, Marathons, and I mean. In particular, you know, I'd say the first Boston that I did, oh, I was coming in hot. <laughs> I came in, I was like on top, I was feeling off good. Off of CIM? No, off, well, I won Cherry Blossom. Oh, right, right, right. And I won Cooper River. And so, but then the second Boston, I was feeling real low. Really? <laughs> and... I had like my taper was like a six week thing. Oh, I like just tapeworm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so basically what I learned from like that second Boston is like show up, do the best you can. And New York actually. Right. And like you'll do okay. Yeah. And it's okay if it's like not your best, like you learn, you'll, you'll prove to yourself that like, even you when just, you're not on your best yeah, day, yeah, you'll just like be consistent, show up, work hard, let the muscle memory, yeah, and all the training take over, yeah, like don't think too hard about like the outcome, and like you'll get it, you'll get it, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, okay, so another topic I want to jump into. Dad, Rick Rojas, all-time yeah. legend. Yeah. Not only is he your coach, but he was, uh, first off, the first Boulder Boulder winner of all time, but also a Nike athlete back in the day. Yeah. What do you remember as a kid having a dad as a pro runner in the 80s and that era? Like, yeah. What was the gear like? I don't know. Anything that you remember? Oh about him as a pro back in the day. I mean, I still have, like, the sickest retro Nike gear. That's what I'm going for, yeah. That, like, my mom wore. And oh, wow. now, and, like, we have, like, you know, our baby Nike shoes and our baby Nike outfits. Yeah. Um, but, like, unfortunately now, you can't tell that it's actually real retro because there's so much retro stuff coming out. Yeah. You know? That's true. It's, they're trying to copy it. They copy it. So I have to like tell people. Yeah. They'll be like sick shirt. I'm like, no, this is from 80. This is, yeah, it yeah. It's from 87. Like, it's really cool. These marks um, are real vintage. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, we're about to go through some audio trouble. I just want to put that out there. Yeah. But uh, we'll keep grinding. We'll see. No. What the happens. tractor's going pretty fast, actually. Yeah, sometimes the audio turns out it's actually good. And I thought it was bad the whole time. Oh. But. <laughs> we might hear things or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally. Um, but, okay, so back with Rick Rojas, coach. What was this, like, your perspective on the concept of being a pro runner as a kid or growing up? Like, did it seem like a good job or identity? Yeah. And I know he did other things, but. Yeah, I mean, so when I was growing up, he was over his pro career. He was having a great master's career okay um but at that point he was a got it yeah, yeah. He, had a, he had a big coaching business in boulder um but i knew he won the first boulder boulder yeah which was like the coolest thing ever iconic growing up as a kid Old in grounds, boulder yeah because yeah. you think like that's the olympics basically um and yeah i like i was very inspired by him and i wanted to I've always wanted to be like him. I, okay. like, my biggest dream was to win the Boulder Boulder. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, stay tuned. Have you, you got... I won the Citizens Race. Okay, okay. Which is good enough. Okay. You know? All right. I, I think you could yeah. win the 10K, if I'm being honest. I, well, yeah. We'll what see. is that, like a, an easy long run for you at this point, I think? 
Are you no, no about? disrespect. I'm what? kidding. I'm saying for you to win the Boulder Boulder. Oh, like the Citizens Race? No, I'm joking about Boulder the pro, Boulder. but. Oh, no. I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well. Anyway, no disrespect. You got bad. I that respect. I did. <laughs> I feel good about the citizens race. Okay, okay. Plus, <laughs> We're on to Boston. Yeah. I got it. What's kind of the, uh, you're going into Boston and you've been there twice. What's like sort of the memory that pops up or anything that kind of, I don't know, are you getting goosebumps or anything like that from uh, things? Or have you not gotten to that point where the, uh, the memory started hitting? You know, you go into an old track or something. Yeah. I think <laughs> both years I ran, I ran out were so different. And I expect this year to be completely different as well. Again, yeah. And I think the first year I was just like, what the F is going on? Like, <laughs> I'm leading, the, I've led the race. Uh -huh. I was like, I'm leading the Boston Marathon. Yeah. You know, like, who do I think I am? <laughs> like, um, and then I was just kind of, that, that year was like very euphoric. Like it felt great. I was like, like in the lead pack. Yeah. I was like, I'm gonna win this race. Oh yeah. Like, I was like I stoked it. for the, when like someone was gonna make a move. I was like, ooh, what am I gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna hang. And then I'm gonna see if, if you're really doing that in the footage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's no. I was like, <laughs> and then the second year, I was like, first step, I was like, I feel like shit. Okay. I don't know why I'm even pretending to be a professional runner. <laughs> like, Molly said, I was like half a mile up True. there. Yeah. I was like, I'm quitting the sport. Wow. But then she like. People were coming back and I was like, oh, yeah. best runner in the world. Oh my God, just like I can that. do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then like, you know, you're just like having these thoughts while you're just like running this chase. Chipping away. Yeah, you're just chipping away. Um, Quick, before we flip, what's the best part of the whole course? Best crowd or anything like that? Um, man, I mean, the whole way is pretty awesome, but I'd say I don't... I've never... I went to BC, the Craig Ramsey's okay. 21. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to send you off. I'm just kidding. I don't know where I am. Oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no idea where I am. That's fair. I'm like, the first time I was like, is this hard break? Yeah, right, right. I have right. no idea if it was or not. <laughs> so, I'm like, oh, this They're must, all heartbreak if you don't know. This must be heartbreak. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no, I think that was hard So, I can't tell you. All right. Yeah. That's good. All right, well, we're going to flip, put a pin in that. And, uh. Wherever you feel safe, Alan. Oh, y'all have a good one. <laughs> Actually, uh, um, funny story. We were I love those. So, yeah. Well, we were talking <laughs> about go. being pros. Yeah. And like, you know, being a professional runner, which is very different than any being professional, whatever. For sure. Anything else. And so we were in Kenya. And me and my photographer were, we went to, um, like the camp brought us to Kapsan, Kapsan, which is where Kipchoge. I wish I could correct you, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Which you is where Kipchoge trains. Yep. And just to like see his, because sometimes they'll let people in, but yep. no one was there. I've seen those big packs. Yes. Like those photos. Yeah. So no one was there, like no one in the NN group was there. Okay. But. The guy, the groundskeeper, came out. He like ran his bike out. He's like, hey guys, sorry no one's here. I can't let you in. I'm like, oh, it's cool. We're just chilling. And he's like, yeah, but like, Kipchoge will be back like on Tuesday. Okay. Um, here's his schedule. Oh, and do you like want his number? <laughs> and and no my way. was like, oh yeah, no, I'll take. <laughs> Take his number. I'll take the goat's number. Take his number. <laughs> so he gives us his number, and I didn't, I didn't get it. But my photographer was like, "Okay, I collected uh, five numbers today. Uh, John, yeah. uh, Tracy, uh, Ulid. Uh, <laughs> okay." So I texted him. Slight he, was like, he was like, "Hey, I have a Nike athlete here. Like, 
wondering if you were like out for like a Link up. five minute yeah. like photo shoot or something. And he's like, yes, let me get back to you. Right. We're like, uh, okay. <laughs> but I just thought that was funny. That's like, insane. Yeah. But then you what, got parasites or how did it, uh, it just ended there? He never texted us back. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but also I got parasites. Ghosted by Ilya, yeah. though, that's kind of fire. Yeah, no, <laughs> I was okay with it. Yeah, um, and yeah, shout out the pickup line. Get Kipchoge's number, let's see. Yeah. So, kind of going off the pro subject, you're with Nike. Yeah. Following in Rick's footsteps, Coach Rick, I should put some respect on his name. <laughs> What's that like? What's the relationship like? And uh, I don't know, any prototypes we can leak real What's quick from Nike? <laughs> um... It's, well, I mean, I've had so far a great experience with Nike. Um, my favorite part about working with them is like, I get to work with Brett Kirby, who's like the lead physiologist, the sports physiologist who worked on the Breaking 2 project. Like, yeah. I get to like ask him questions and like go get tested by him. Yeah. Um, I get to work with the shoe team who, um, like, I know what shoes I'm most efficient in, and... Any nuggets? What, any, what have you learned from a shoe team about your own form or um, foot strike, something like that? I'm most efficient in the Alpha Fly 3s, nice. which are, like, coming out at some point. Right. They're, like, already out. Like, I can wear them. Um, I don't say... I'm not the guy. I'm not the shoe guy. Okay, yeah. Um, so... So yeah. Cool. Yeah. So All right. Good. I'm happy. All right. So, <laughs> gonna change the subject completely here, but I, before I forget, NAU days. First Bump of all, jacks. yeah, yeah. I mean, they're obviously like insane right now. Um, yeah. What's kind of your perspective on the program first? Looking at it nowadays, and maybe the NCAA landscape in general. Okay. With everything that's changed and. Yeah, I mean, I think. Going it's a big to, question. Going to NAU yeah. now is very different than going to NAU in 2006 when I went. Uh -huh. um, it wasn't as glorious. Right. Like, it wasn't, like, as prestigious. Flagstaff. To go there. Like, yeah. low-key. Um, I think you could, like, I walked on. A number of my guy friends walked on. Mm -hmm. um, and we had still won national championships and the girls were coming off you know we finished I think our highest finish was seventh at um NCAA cross mm -hmm. which is pretty good um yeah and big sky of winners I think. oh big sky of every yeah yeah, yeah. I mean they, I'm sure they still I don't yeah yeah no, sure they, they can't confirm that for sure yeah. I'll go out on a limb yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they go with like one through five in the yeah right um but yeah, I think I'm like very proud to be a lumberjack, and I was root for them. Oh yeah. Um, NCAA I, landscape. Yeah, yeah. What I, do you, I mean, I don't know any, any advice, because what I was getting at. Well, it's late to catch up. I want to drop this line. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I heard you say on another podcast like you felt almost that you wanted to be all in while you were in college, but you felt almost like too immature or something to realize really kind of the opportunity at the time yeah and I feel like with the way things have changed now it's almost even more important to hear that or that lesson I guess I think would resonate yeah. with a lot um I just think I don't know I just think it's I think everyone matures at a different age and um but yeah I think like you have to be so good at saying no to things mm -hmm. and so good at being true to yourself yep. to say like, no, like I, I'm putting running as a priority. Right. Um, and those are the girls, like, especially like on the girl side of things, like girls will, you know, shut that down. Girls will be like, oh, she's weird or she yeah. thinks she's too good or she. Especially the team culture. The team culture. Yeah. Yeah. And so now looking back at the girls who did do that, right. who we were all pissed at because <laughs> we weren't able to do it. Yes, yeah. um, you know, they had a lot of 
success. And so I think it's just being confident in yourself, which is hard as a college girl. Yeah, I mean, that's good on you for saying that because that's exactly what I was getting at. Like, yeah. I can relate to that so much. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, not as a girl part, but just in general. Like. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure it's guys, too. Yeah. I just know the female perspective, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, kind of touching off that, but on a different, the yin to that yang, like the girls you train with now and the, um, some of the partners, I know you talked about getting advice from Morgan Pearson and Molly and uh -huh. Haruni and what's kind of the squad like these days? What is your approach to training and like your training groups? How much mileage are you doing solo and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. So I'd say I train with Molly mostly. Okay. She's like... I come so much faster. Yeah. Where I'm like, damn. She's, she's a beast. She's gonna, yeah. Um, yeah. And Molly, like everyone works in my squad. Yep. Um, I also work. I'm a coach, but yep. that's very flexible and I set that up that way. So. Um, Lincoln bio. Yeah, exactly. Literally. Yeah. Um, but so training partners like Molly's work schedule is flexible mm -hmm. but I everyone else has to wake up at 6 a.m. to train got it, got it. so I never see them okay okay yeah cool. I'm like I'm like I'm with you I'm like a 10 a.m. -er. like that's what we met and I was like 10 okay like right. I will you and me both set my alarm <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah like, okay okay so yeah, respect yeah, yeah. Um, that's good so I do a lot solo I do like my easy mileage with either like friends from other groups yeah or by myself which I like running by myself, I'm fine, and then workouts with, with Molly. Okay. Yeah, and pretty good at supporting each other and um, helping each other, I think. Okay, yeah, I think that's, we had them on. All of the uh, folks can check out the episode with Haruni and Molly, but um, also I want to touch on, like, is there anyone outside of your group that you kind of, like, admire or stay up to date on, maybe through social media or trackster not actually but um <laughs> you know anyone outside there in the world that you just kind of see from afar that you maybe even try to incorporate to your game or something like that like a uh, female runner yeah this is funny we've been having this conversation a lot i think um i respect a lot of different runners and i'll take pieces from different like different aspects of different runners all right respect that side of their training but yeah I think everyone has something to learn from there's not like one person yeah. that I praise or yeah yeah know. yeah um, is that maybe uh, can I prod that <laughs> you're just competitive and you're not trying to put them up there <laughs> or not um I mean I'm very competitive yeah it takes me it's it's taken me a long time I think when you're coming into the sport and you're insecure and you're terrified because it's like you're on your own you don't have a team yep. you don't know anyone you're you took some time off yeah like I it's really off. scary yeah so i think people's and like i see this in a lot of young women okay their first reaction is two things one to be like oh my gosh like oh, i'm around you wow to like some of the bigger names yeah and then b because of their insecurities yeah find faults in them find find like oh she's not doing the right stuff yeah she's not training well enough you know kind of like bring them down and it has taken me i mean i'm 35 so 35 years to like be able to like logically be like no like she's fit as fuck She's training really well. Like she was strong here, you know, maybe overtrained here. Mm -hmm. And like, not, I'm not like, oh, I want to work together, women. <laughs> I'm <laughs> yeah, not like, yeah. no, I want to beat them. But like, respect. They're like, they're fast. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So. Um, no, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Like coming into Boston, like, I'm like, okay, of course I'd like to do well. Yeah. If you look at the competition, I'm like, there's tons of Africans yeah. that are fast. You never know what shape they're gonna come in on. Yeah. Sometimes you look at the PR sheet and you're like, oh wait, that was from like 15 years ago. Yep. Like, cause at first you're like, holy Whoa, shit! Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 
Um, but like, Emma Bates is. There's a lot of that. Thank you for saying yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Emma Bates is like super, super fit. Yeah. Well, I think she'll have a great performance. I don't know. I think it's beneficial to me to see the court, to know the course. True. And to have done the course twice. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's no question, yeah. Balafine is also terrifying. <laughs> yeah, Super yeah. strong, but sometimes she doesn't have good races, you know? So. Yeah, <laughs> I'm loving this. This is awesome. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to go on, I just kind of thought about it, like, you've, you've learned a lot, like we were saying, about the marathon, and you were already good from the beginning. Has there been any, like, fueling errors or lessons about that stuff and I don't know anything like learned about your own training and race day methods um, in that regard yeah like there's always like I remember talking to a marathon was like yeah I learned like I had to consume like 700 calories wow. or something yeah. so there's just stuff that people don't know about and I imagine going in as a first timer you have a different method now yeah I think at first you're like, you don't realize how beneficial it is to take in as many carbs as you can handle. Right. And so you're like, okay, you know, I'll do this, I'll do this. But now you're like, okay, no, all my long runs, I'm like, let me practice. Like Molly makes fun of me, like taking in so many calories. That's what I'm getting, yes, yeah. I love it. <laughs> and I think sometimes girls are scared of that. Yeah. Um, but go off. Yeah. <laughs> I think, and also like, you know, tapering, making sure like I've like not eaten enough during taper before. Yep. And like almost really fucked myself over. Yeah. Because my body just like didn't have enough glycogen stores. But yeah. So yeah, I've learned all these lessons many many times. Good, good. And I will probably still keep learning them. Yeah, of course. <laughs> For sure, that's that means you are actually a runner because you know that that's true. Yeah. And it's gonna happen again. Yeah, but. yeah. Um, all right, we're wrapping up here. We'll keep going. I have a couple rapid fire questions. Right. We'll we'll go. All the run details, of course, are on Trackster. And make sure you follow Nell. All of her stuff will be linked. Thank you so much for pulling up and doing this. And best of luck with Boston and everything else coming up. Yeah. All right, let's go. Favorite uh, Nike gear in your closet right now. Um, I have this puffy jacket. Okay. I don't know what it's called. Heck but yeah. I really like it. Important. Okay. <laughs> also, you're the. I think you're the official source for this answer, <laughs> okay. based off of your having been born in Boulder and gone to college in Flagstaff. Yeah. Which one's better? Oh. <laughs> End the debate. <laughs> well, I mean, End the debate now. Okay. I mean, I have to say Boulder. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> gotta say true. I love it. No, I love flag staff. I, I'm putting her on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I love flag, but hold her. All right, oh yeah, and then let's end. Uh, you have to do a run, kind of hard day, trail run type workout out here or track. Um, or none of the above. Ooh, both. Okay. <laughs> I, I literally am I'm one of those people that I, I love every workout. Okay, all right. Yeah. I love that answer. Yeah. All right, that's a good one to end on. Yeah, there you go. Thanks so much, Thank Dan. You. Hell yeah. All right, you're free to go. Let me pause these cameras. Dude, we're, we're doing Frank Lara. Nice. <laughs>